Hello everyone. In this session, we will discuss the next topic is the centroid. Okay, this is the centroid. So before discussing this, last session we discuss about the asymptotes. Asymptotes. In this asymptotes, we we have the infinite zeros. Infinite. For example, in the mustn't should be pole should be equal to zeros then there is no problem if poles are not equal to zero we require some infinity branches infinity branches that time the asymptotes will be entered asymptotes will be entered and it has some angle asymptote asymptote angle it has some angle theta a but we don't know where exactly exactly the asymptotes will be entering we don't know exactly where asymptotes will be entering for that purpose we using the centroid we are using the centroid yes it is the inter intersection point of the asymptote to the real axis so generally we have the real axis is there for this real axis we have where we have the intersection point where we have the intersection point that is called the centroid centroid is related to asymptotes asymptotes related to asymptotes okay it is related to asymptotes right so here what is centroid here centroid means the sum of real parts of poles minus sum of real parts of zeros by number of poles minus number of zeros here p minus z means wherever the p is there you should keep p represents number of poles where where is the z it represents number of zeros number of zeros so the centroid is is generally represents with sig this symbol sigma so this centroid equal sum of real part of poles real part only okay because poles have real, sometimes real parts and imaginary parts but you keep only the real part sum minus sum of real part of zeros we have real part we have zeros is there that that thing by number of poles minus number of zeros then we will get the centroid right here the centroid may be located anywhere on the real axis so it is anywhere on the real axis may or may not be on the rl branch okay so we have rl branches in that rl branch it have the so we have some rl branches like this we have the real axis and rl branches like this here the rl branches root locus branches like this like that but centroid may be anywhere on the root locus branch or or may not be root locus branch anywhere it will be so this is also important point that's why the centroid may be located anywhere in the real axis may not or may or may not on the rl branch may or may not on the rl branch here the asymptotes equals pole minus p minus p equal to z yeah yes so this is about the centroid centroid represents the intersection point of the asymptotes okay it is on the real axis real axis in on the real axis but it is maybe may or may not be on the root locus branch wherever the rl is there that is rl is nothing but the that is root locus simply this is the root locus okay here now we will understand what is asymptote asymptote angle and centroid all the points by doing this problem here the problem is calculate the angle of asymptote and centroid of g of g of s h of s equal to k by s into s plus 5 s plus 10 that means here he given the open loop transfer function initially so here open loop transfer function initially write down the open loop transfer function g of s h of s is equals to k by s into s plus 5 s plus 10 okay here how many poles number of poles 
generally poles value equal to 3 those poles are 0 minus 5 and minus 10 and zeros are z equal to 0 we don't have any zeros that means zeros number of zeros is 0 so we should take asymptotes that 1 infinite 2 infinite 3 infinite that means you we should have the three asymptotes we should have the three asymptotes that means for one pole we have one asymptote that is infinite for second pole second infinite third pole third asymptote now here we first we should know the centroid where it locates are asymptote angles at which angle these asymptotes are and asymptotes are going for that purpose the asymptote angle the asymptote angle formula is asymptote angle is nothing but theta a the formula is 2q plus 1 by number of poles minus number of zeros into 180 and here q value represents 0 1 2 why 0 1 2 the maximum point is pole minus 0 minus 1 okay how many poles is there how many poles is there poles are 3 0 minus zeros are 0 minus 1 so that means 3 minus 1 2 so the maximum point is the 2 so that's why 0 1 2 so first you need to get the first asymptote angle theta a 1 then 2 into q value is first take 0 plus 1 by poles minus 0 is uh, 3 minus 0 into 180 so by doing this we will have 180 by 3 so we have the 60 here next second asymptotic angle theta a 2 2 into 1 plus 1 by 3 into 180 okay here 2 into 1 is 3 plus 1 by 3 into 180 okay and then 3 60 6 4 ja, we will get the other 180 angle other 180 angle is sorry 2 into 0 1 2 plus 1 sorry this is the complete 3 3 into 60 6 3 ja, again we have the another asymptotic angle is 180 and we will find next asymptotic angle that is theta a 3 so 2 into theta a 3 means 2 into 2 plus 1 by by 3 into 180 so by doing this we will get 2 into 2 4 plus 1 by 3 into 180 so this is 5 by 3 into 180 so 360 so we will get the asymptotic angle theta a 3 equal to 300 so we have three angles first asymptotic angle theta a 1 equal to 60 and another asymptotic angle theta a 2 is equal to uh, the angle equal to 180 and third angle theta a 3 equal to 300 okay we are getting angles now we will find out the centroid here the centroid formula equal to centroid means location of asymptotes location of asymptotes centroid formula sigma equal um, real part of real part of poles real part of poles minus real part of poles minus real part of zeros real part of poles minus real part of zeros by number of poles minus number of zeros is the formula so by this real part of poles we have poles is minus 10 minus 5 minus 0 minus 10 minus 5 0 by 0 is 0 by 3 
by doing this we will have minus 15 by 3 that means centroid is we will get sigma value equal to minus 5 minus 5 so we having angles asymptotic angles and we have the centroid so by using this we will draw the root locus diagram so this is the root locus diagram here we have the root locus diagram yes so first pole is s equal to 0 okay second pole equal to s equal to minus 5 this equal s equal to minus 5 third pole equal to s equal to minus 10 we have three poles and now poles are available and we don't know where this branch is going on we don't know where this branch is going on for that purpose we should take the asymptotes now so where asymptote location centroid will give the asymptote location so this point is the asymptotic location okay in this we have three angle first angle equal to theta a equal to 60 degrees so from this it will go approximately i will take this is the first asymptotic angle that means it is the at 60 degrees okay and second asymptote will go at 180 degrees so that means it will go at 180 degrees second in the first infinity is go like this second infinity go like this because it is the 180 degrees yes third asymptote will give 300 degrees so i will take approximately this is the third asymptotic that value is the 300 degrees so this is the 300 degrees okay now you will take the rl now you will take the root locus diagram so look at here so i will take the root locus diagram now the root locus diagram is yeah so here if you look at here for this side there is no so this is a zero poles and zeros there is no rl branch but after this we have two two after this we have one pole maybe these are two poles we have the root locus diagram so we will take we will take like this so it has some pole also have the and it will follow the it will follow the asymptotes and it is also follow the asymptotes so that's why this these are poles that's why these are leaving these are leaving and it will re reach to the infinity branch so that's why the asymptotes will give the reference from the root locus branch so that's why it will generate from the 60 degrees here it will generate from the 300 300 degrees starts from what about this up to this we have two poles there is no rl branch and what about this at here we have rl branch at this point so next is follow from this point follow from this point so that's why these asymptote will give where it shows the root locus and centroid will give asymptote location point and by using that we will approximately draw the root locus diagrams okay always poles are starts from k equal 0 and we reach the infinite so it will it will start gain k is 0 here and gain k is infinite here infinite here here also gain k is 0 here because it is also pole it will reach somewhere infinite here this for this pole this may be the 0 or this may be the 0 anything you can take but every pole has every 0 here also we have the pole that will reach the infinite at this pole gain is 0 here and it will reach the gain infinity here okay so by using this centroid and angle of asymptotes and angle of asymptotes and centroid concept we will design we will assume the we will assume the uh, root locus okay i hope all of you understand this session
about centroid and regarding problem thank you